Hello and welcome to my channel and I must start out with a huge apology for the last video I uploaded which is the video that is on the same subject as this one the envelope box for three-dimensional cards I didn't even realize what I was doing I think I was a putting myself back in the saddle a little too quickly and so I had inadvertently included footage from uh, some other uh, video that I had deleted because I realized I'd made a mistake and somehow that got mixed in and so it was very confusing and thank you to two of my subscribers for pointing it out to me so I do apologize so I was able to go back and retrieve the correct footage and then upload it here for you now so I'm just going to redo this intro for you and remind you that this is the same video so if you don't want to watch it again then that's fine uh, but be assured that this is the correct footage so as I said this is an envelope box that you will usually make to accommodate 3d cards it could be pop-up cards uh, it could be uh, slide cards as you see here there are some a couple of pop-up cards which might struggle to go inside of an envelope or perhaps you want to place something else in the box with the card and especially for something like an easel card that has uh, a three dimension such as you're going to see here in just a moment a card that is made to look like a hat here it is now and so you want that to have plenty of depth that's no way is that going to fit into an envelope so you need some sort of a box and so that's what i'm going to show you how to do today so, if you want to learn how it's done, then stick with me, and I'll show you how. I'm using the download version of Canvas Workspace for this project. And the first thing we need to do is to determine the size of the card, or whatever we're going to place inside of this box envelope. And it doesn't really matter what size it is to begin with, because the formula is going to be the same across the board. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use a six by six card for my envelope box. You could have, as I said, a four by four, a five by five, something like even like a five by seven. It doesn't matter because you're going to work it out the same to determine the size of your envelope box. So I'm going to bring in a square here that measures six by six. So this will represent our card. Give it a little bit of color here so we can see it a bit better. And here on this mat, I've got the one by one grid lines on. So if I want to make this box an inch deep, then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to add the extra width and height to accommodate that depth. So that next step is to determine how deep you want your box to be. I, as I said, I'm going to use a one inch depth. Now it could be an inch and a half it could be two inches it could be a half an inch or an inch it doesn't really matter whatever you start with you need to add that to your original card size now this is not going to be a reinforced box it's simply going to be 
a sort of bog standard envelope box because there's nothing really heavy going inside of it. But if you wanted to, then you could reinforce the bottom of this box. And what you would have to do in that case is to add the additional width and height to accommodate for that. So if you wanted, for example, another one inch to fold over those sides and glue around those edges to reinforce this box, then you would add another, well, in this case, two inches to your sides. But let's just go back to the one inch sides. That means you're going to add an inch here, which would fill up these grids. You're going to add an inch on the other side and at the top and the bottom. So that means you need to add two inches to the width and two inches to the height. So if this was a five by seven, then you would add two inches to the five, two inches to the seven, so it would be seven by nine. Because this is a square card, it's going to be exactly the same for the width and the height. So that is going to be eight by eight. Right, now this I'm showing you here is the base of the box or the bottom of the box. So keep that in mind. And the next thing I need to do is to form the tabs. There will be tabs at all four corners to use to glue them into the sides and form the box. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring in a square that measures one inch because again the depth of the box is one inch. Right? Now, the easiest way for me to do this is, first of all, I'll make a duplicate of it. Oops. I'll show you why I've only made three so far in just a moment. But what I'm going to do is start here at this corner. I'll do one at a time for you. Now you'll see that because this has got some fill to it, we can see where it is positioned. It's on top, and that's where we want it in this case. It must be on top in order for it to be punched out of this bottom layer. So I'm going to highlight both the square underneath and then the square on top. And then I'll go to the alignment tool and I'm going to align this to the left. And I'm going to align it to the top. So now it's smack dab in that corner. Then go to process overlap and select subtract. That then is going to cut out that corner. We'll repeat that on the other side. So we'll bring this one in and as you can see now it's disappeared behind. So either we can take the main piece and place it to the back or we can take this square and bring it to the front. Either one. So let's bring that to the front and then we can select it. We're going to align this one to the right and to the top and select our subtract function. So we have this top piece done. Now, if you don't want to use the subtract overlap, you can use the divide. And that 
comes in handy when you need to make duplicates. And I'll show you. Okay, we're going to bring this one in and it's to the back. But because we're going to use divide, it doesn't matter whether it's on top or on bottom because it's going to leave behind one of these or one of the or the square, the one inch square. So if I highlight both of those and I align them the bottom and to the left and now I select divide you can see how that changed right there just move it over here and I can grab that bit move it out of the way so my one inch is still available to me I can come over to this end Just going to change the color so you can see. This time I'm going to have the smaller square on top. Then I'm going to select both of these shapes, align them to the bottom and to the right, divide. And we have the same result. I'm going to actually hold on to that square because I'm going to use it to make the tabs. So we have now the start for making the tabs and the perforation lines that we're going to need for the uh, fold, uh, the folded sides. I want this tab to be a wedge shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, zoom in a bit so you can see better. I'm going to click inside of this shape and you'll see that the path editing tools is now available. So these nodes can be edited. This one here, since it's already highlighted, you can see the, the blue dot there. I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to form the shape. So I want to move this to the left. Right? Begin the start of this wedge shape. So using the left arrow key, I'm going to click it. I've clicked about 12 clicks there, just enough to bring it in so that it, it won't butt up against this side here. Then I can click on the opposite node, which is this one here, and I can use the right arrow key to do the same. So there is our wedge. I might bring this one in just a little bit more. There we are. And now I'm ready to place these into the four corners. And I will need to duplicate these. So I have these for the top. I'm going to need two for the bottom, except they're going to be flipped over. And let's duplicate that. So I'll just move those towards the bottom down here. But now we need to weld these tabs into place. And that means they need to overlap and then we can just eyeball it best we can but what we can do instead is to select these two shapes 
and use the alignment tool to line it up to the left first of all and then you could either, either go ahead and just weld this now and we can see where it's going to be we know that's definitely overlapped or we can see if we place it to the top if it's still going to weld let's try it go to weld and it worked because now you can see it's one complete piece so that worked out very well so we'll do the same with this piece here and again it doesn't matter because you're welding this that one or the other is on top it doesn't matter the position so we'll do this again we'll align it to the right in this case and the top and weld and now we can come down to the bottom let's find those pieces there they are and we'll do exactly the same on this side except of course now we'll be aligning them to the bottom right that is all done now we need to add perforation lines for our score line if you wanted to, you could just cut this out as it is and add the score lines manually with a scoreboard or with a ruler and stylus. But I'm going to go ahead and add my lines in for me. So I'm going to zoom out. And the first thing I'm going to do is start with this here in the corner of the mat so that when I put my perforation lines I can place them exactly where I want so I'm going to use the X and Y to place this right in the corner and I'm also going to lock it into place so that it doesn't move about on me then I'm going to use the snap to grid for my score lines for the path tool you kid if you like just I'll take that off for a moment just bring your path tool in hit your shift key and then hold it until you've got it into position double click and you have your your uh, score line but I'm going to use the snap to grid I'm using a one inch grid so it actually is going to place this at the one inch mark so I'm going to go between let's just take that off so we can go in and look at it I'm going to change it to a dash pattern Can actually just bring it into position there and there right so that's our first score line we duplicate this and we're going to move it over to the other side you can use the positioning tool here so we're going to move this one over to the seven inch mark and if we need to we can move that up or down it looks fine as it is right so those are the vertical lines we need to do horizontal lines as well 
So our horizontal lines are going to go across the top here. So we'll go back to snap to grid. That is in position. Okay, so it's at the corner, x is 0 and y is 1. Change that to a dash pattern. And duplicate it. And then we can move this one to the 7 inch mark. So it's seven. Okay, and those are our perforation lines, our score lines completed. So these are going to be the glue tabs. And these are the sides. Now, as I said, this is the base or the bottom of the box. The lid we're going to make next. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I've unlocked this so that I can now group all these together. I've got the score lines and the main piece grouped and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to give it a little different color though. Right. Now, if I were to cut this out now and glue these together, glue the, the bottom piece together and the, the top piece together, when I went to put it together, it's not going, when I went to place the card inside and then close the, the, um, the envelope box, it's not going to work. Because what's going to happen is it's just, because they are the same size at this point, the the uh, the sides are just going to butt up against each other. So it, it's going to go on top, but it's not to go over the sides. So I hope that makes sense. So in order for it to the lid to slide over the bottom of this box then they have to be different sizes. So one has to be smaller than the other. So I'm going to make my lid a little larger than the bottom. Because as you can see right now, if I were to align these together, you can't see any difference. Even if I were to take this and place it to the back, you can't see the lid apart from the bottom of this box. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my back arrow key here bring this out. Now this is our lid. I'll move this one over and this one I'm going to make larger. What I'm going to do is to change the size from 8 inches to 8 point zero six two five. Because that's going to make this an eighth of an inch wider and taller. So when I bring this piece in, bringing that to the front, highlight it and align it.
when I zoom in, you'll see that there is a little bit more on the sides than the, the bottom. So that lid is now an eighth of an inch more than the bottom. So when we cut this out, it's going to fold down or slide down over top. Okay, now I'm ready to send these to the machine and I'll cut them out and I'll be back with the results. So we'll put it together in just a moment. pieces now. I've got the bottom and the lid. So we'll start with the bottom here and we'll fold this along these score lines. This is American Craft cardstock so it has a textured side here which I'm going to have on the outside. It's going to go all the way around and reinforce those score lines like so and then I'll be ready to glue this together so these tabs are going to go in the sides like so and if you found that your tab was Protruding past the side here, you could always just take your scissors and trim that down. But these look just fine. So we're going to put our adhesive here on these tabs, and that's going to be in the outside corner here. We'll do that one and then we'll come and do this one next. And then I'll fold those in like so. And just use my fingers to square up that corner there. And I'll use my scoring tool as well. Do the same on this side. And then once that is fairly secure, I'll move to the other. Right, now I'm going to set that aside for a moment. We'll work on the lid. I'm going to do exactly the same here. And to fold along the score line and apply the adhesive. So I'll do that and then we'll give this box. Now, because the base is pretty much right on to 6x6, six six, if you, when using this for a 6x6 six six card, and I'll show you here, it will fit in, but you're going to have to probably just sort of position it like that. If you want more room around the sides, then you want to increase the starting size of your base and your lid, of course by 
at least an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch. So that's up to you. Now, for a five and a half, this is a five and a half inch card. And that, as you can see, fits very nicely inside of there. So just that suggestion, if you want to be sure that you can use these for your six by six cards, such as these here, and you don't want to have your recipient struggle to get it out of the, the, uh, the base, although it will come out like that. So let's place our easel card here. This is a hat easel card inside the box. And we'll put the lid on next. And as you can see, it's going to slide over the sides. And it's very secure. There is the envelope box. In this case, a 6x6 six six box. But as I said, you can make this any size you want. Just use the very same formula you used to make this one. And you'll be on your way to making a lovely presentation box for those very special cards. Thank you so much to everyone for joining me again. I'm sorry about the delay in getting this video out to you and hopefully things will be a little better from now on. Uh, fingers crossed. And if you are in Kentucky, I would like to extend my heartfelt prayers to you and hope that you are safe, you are well, and for those who have sadly passed, then I do give my prayers and condolences to the families and friends. Thank you so much for joining me. If you aren't already subscribed, please consider doing so today. And until we meet again, stay safe and crafty hugs. Bye.